For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome custom guitars. Now, I'm turning my passion into a profession by seeking out old, beat-up guitars and giving them new life, all while trying to make a profit. I'll be searching everywhere for used gear that I can refret, rewire, repaint, whatever it takes to make it a real shredder. This is Trash to Thrash. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Trash to Thrash with me, Mark Murray. I've been getting so many requests to work on your guys' guitars that this week it's all going to be customer guitars from you guys. This week we got a couple really cool guitars that people have sent in for me to work on. And the first one I'm going to be showing you guys is this. This is a Jackson, I believe it's a 1993 Jackson Dinky EX. If you guys have seen the show, you know that I love Jackson guitars. I've rebuilt a bunch of them on the show and this one is right up my alley. It's got tons of chips and dings on it. It's been to hell and back. After looking at it close, I can see that the Floyd Rose studs need to be filled, re-drilled. It's got a lot of damage. It's been abused over the years and the body is destroyed on this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this thing a new paint job. We're going to change the pick guard out to a single humbucker. And we're going to kind of Van Halen it up. We're going to do some stripes on it but not typical Van Halen stripes. We're gonna do a custom stripe pattern and we're gonna do different colors. My customer, Aaron, he's from West Virginia, but he's a big Seattle Seahawks fan. So we're gonna do it in the Seattle Seahawks colors, dark blue and neon green. So this thing's gonna be crazy. Although it's a 1993, the body is trashed. The neck is in great shape. Most of the time with these old Jacksons, the tip, the sharp tip on the top of the headstock gets completely destroyed, gets broken off over the years. And look at that thing. That's like one of the nicest original Jackson necks I've ever seen. So this is an old made in Japan guitar, which when fixed up right, are excellent guitars. The body is basswood. It's got an Eastern rock maple neck, which is a great solid hardwood. And this thing's got a lot of potential. The fretboard's still in good condition. It hasn't been dried out too bad over the years. So the second guitar I wanna start this week is this one right back here. This is a PV Rockmaster, which is a model I had never even seen before. A few months ago, I built a Frankenstrat replica for a guy named Kelvin that I met from New York. He was a fan of my Instagram page, saw some of the work I had done, and ordered one through me. I sent it out to him, and he fell in love with it. Then he saw Trash to Thrash, and he showed his buddy Haro, who also plays guitar, and they started talking, started coming up with some ideas, and they came up with the idea to send me this PV right here to rebuild. In one of the early episodes, I refer to it as the Murray touch. It's like the Midas touch where everything turns to gold. Half the guitars I build for myself end up with gold hardware. So they actually told me they want the Murray touch on this guitar. We're actually gonna do a blue to purple burst on this guitar with black splatter, which is awesome. I've never thought of that before. And with talking to these guys, we came up with this crazy cool custom finish that we're gonna do on this one. All gold hardware, a gold EMG pickup in it, gold bridge, gold tuners, this thing is gonna be sweet. Now I got my hands full with these things, so let's get started. As with all rebuilds, the first step is to take the guitar apart. So I hand it off to my shop assistant, Ryan, who's gonna do that and then sand them down. Sometimes opening up these old guitars, you find some weird work that somebody else has done and some weird parts inside it, but both of these turned out to be pretty normal stuff. Nothing out of the ordinary. After this, Ryan sanded them down using 600 grit sandpaper. After the initial sanding, you could see I did some Bondo work to the body. I filled in some of the screw holes that were mounting the pick guard because we're going to be making a smaller custom pick guard for this guitar. Now we're on to some sanding and I just used an electric palm sander for this with 600 grit sandpaper. I have various workstations for working on guitars and for sanding I always like to go outside because the Bondo dust and all that kind of stuff, I don't like that kind of stuff getting around in the shop or in my finishing areas. And especially not in a paint booth. A paint booth is for painting only. Speaking of paint booths, now it's time to go in the paint booth and spray some color on this thing. The plan with this guitar is to go with the navy blue, medium blue, and purple burst with black splatter on it. But you don't always stick to the game plan. So for the first coat, I started off by giving it navy edges and then blending in the purple and the medium blue on the front and back. This is just the first coat, so really I'm just trying to get some coverage here and get an idea for how I want the burst to look on the second or third coats. It does look pretty cool but it's not quite what I envisioned. So the second coat, I'm gonna do it quite a bit different. Now it's been about 15 minutes and it's time to start throwing on the second coat. 
For the second coat, I decided to start with the medium blue because it was a dominant color and I noticed the pigment is really strong in this paint. So I want this to be the base with the other colors on top of it. You know, when I started this show, it was a way of me turning my hobby of rebuilding used guitars I found online and flipping them to make money. I'd been buying beat up guitars for years from people and rebuilding them to my liking, but the collection started getting out of control and I accumulated 50 guitars that I hardly play. I have my main 10 or so guitars that I play all the time and a few other sentimental ones, but I was basically building a giant collection of guitars I just don't play very often. I love building custom guitars and the dream would be to do this as my full time job. Thank you guys for all the support so far, I really appreciate it. Help me out by subscribing to this channel, hitting the notification bell, liking this video and all the other ones of mine that you watch. We know YouTube will suggest videos to people that get more likes and comments because if it's generating that type of response, obviously people want to see it. If you want to get your guitar pimped, fixed up, upgraded, whatever you want to call it, or you want me to build you a modded Rhodes, custom super strat, a killer explorer, or whatever else you'd like, send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com, and let's talk about your guitar. After blending the three colors back and forth, I stood back and gave the guitar a little bit of overspray with the medium blue, and it gave it a really cool, almost like a metallic type of feel. The purple and the two blues blended together really well, and actually, it has a real space vibe to it. I really like the way it turned out, and I don't even think it needs the black splatter after all. I said a minute ago, sometimes you don't stick to the game plan. And in this case, I took some photos of it, sent it to the customer, and we both agreed, no black splatter, we're gonna leave it like this. Once this thing gets a clear coat, polished up, and some gold hardware, this thing's gonna look awesome. Along with the body, I also painted the headstock to match. But when you paint the headstock, it needs a logo on it, right? So I recently bought a Cricut Maker, which is a machine that does all kinds of stuff, including cutting vinyl and foam. This is what I'm now using to make my headstock logos. Here I'm using silver metallic vinyl to make a new logo for the PV Rockmaster. After applying it, it looks really good. The silver pops against the space color, and it's going to be a really cool contrast against the gold hardware. I could have used gold metallic vinyl, but I think that would have been too much gold and might have looked a little cheesy. I'll also be spraying clear coat over this, so it's going to get sealed in nicely. Another really cool thing on this guitar is the pick guard. We're going with a smaller, modified pickguard, in clear instead of black. Since the pickguard will be quite a bit smaller than the original, I filled some of the original holes in the body. The material I used is actually a plexiglass, which is a little more brittle than the standard PVC plastic pickguards, and a bit more difficult to work with. But for really cool custom guitars, I like to think outside the box and bring in materials and things from other industries like this. For this guitar, we're replacing the tone knob with something. Something special. You guessed it, a kill switch. Kill switches and crazy finishes is what I'm becoming known for, so most of my customers request these things. This one will get a gold kill switch with a blue LED. The pick guard looks awesome on the body. I wanted it to follow the original body lines and curves that the pick guard had, so I traced the outside edge here, and the top where I cut it short, I gave it kind of a curve so it kept that style going. The body and neck are now ready for some clear coat, so this guitar is well upon its way. I'm really digging the finish on this guitar. It's kind of giving me like a space mixed with John Petrucci majesty vibes. Now let's get into the Jackson Dinky EX. This one was sent in by Aaron for me to fix up. This is a really cool guitar. You don't see these EX models very often. Some of you may remember the Jackson Rhodes EX that I rebuilt on episodes five and six. These EXs are solid guitars when set up correctly. This is from the 1993 Jackson catalog. Here you can see the Rhodes I had recently rebuilt. And then here, two pages down, you can see the Jackson Dinky EX. It's funny, in the catalog here, they actually have it listed at 24 frets, but clearly, it's a 22 fret guitar. I love these old Jackson and ESP catalogs, and even just a few pages down from here, you can see the 1993 Kelly Standard, which is the exact year and model of the Stealth Splatter that I recently did. These old Jacksons are some of my favorite guitars of all time. Okay, so let's get into this Dinky. The biggest thing that scares me is not all the chips and body damage, that's pretty easy to deal with. It's when you look close here at this Floyd Rose mounting stud. It's completely crooked, it's glued and epoxied in with who knows what, it's braced with cheap small pieces of wood, so I think it's gotta come out, that whole area's gotta be removed and refilled with another piece of wood. It's gonna get a little surgery. But we'll kick off this guitar by filling all the major chips and dings with Bondo, and then sanding them level. And now the fun begins, getting out the Dremel and extracting the bridge post. 
It actually almost feels like I'm doing some type of dentistry or surgery or something like that. Pulling a tooth or something with these pliers. But it came out pretty easily. So after just removing about half of the depth so far, I'm going to take it down further because there's still a lot of just glue and weird materials there. The Dremel has this attachment that will let you set a predetermined depth and then it won't go beyond that. So it's going to cut a nice even pocket out. It's basically like a tiny router. Here at this depth, I can see that I'm hitting wood now, so I stop going deeper and all the old bad stuff is out. And I'm going to make a new piece out of wood. So I use my calipers to measure the gap that I have just removed out and trace it onto a piece of hard oak that I had on hand. If I was working on a vintage instrument or replacing a large section of the body, I would try to match the type of wood that the body originally had. But it's such a small section that I can get away with using a small piece of hard oak here. And my little piece, after being pressed in a little bit, fits in there perfectly. I cut it out using a bandsaw. And of course I glued it in using some high performance wood glue. Now it's filled nice and evenly and it's time to route it down a little deeper after letting it dry. So it's back to the Dremel, so I can create the shelf for the Floyd Rose to rest on. This is a really slow process and you just have to take your time, and you have to be used to using a Dremel tool because while it can be a pretty precise tool, it also can get out of control pretty quickly. So you need to know how this tool reacts when it hits an obstacle when you're working with it. Finish it up by sanding it down, make it nice and smooth and level. Now I've measured where the new hole needs to be mounted and I'm gonna drill a pilot hole at about an eighth of an inch. The pilot hole looks good, nice and centered. So now we bring it into the drill press and drill it out to about three eighths of an inch. Now I've dropped the bridge post back in. It's a snug fit, but it's perfect. It could still use a little bit of sanding here. Maybe a little more Bondo here on the top to help it be a little more smooth. But looking back to what it was and what it is now, this is gonna look great. After just a little bit more Bondo and sanding, this thing is just about ready for paint now. All right guys, thanks so much for watching. Be sure if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell to be notified every time a new episode comes out, and leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think of these two guitars so far. Let me know for the splatter haters out there how happy you are we didn't go with splatter on the PV. Um, be sure to tune in next week and you'll see how the PV's going, how the Jackson's coming along. And also, of course, in the background, I'm still working on the Ibanez Proline V, the Roswell, the other Jackson Rhodes that I was working on, and the Crackle Kelly. So there's a ton going on behind the scenes. I got a ton more guitars sent in from people over here. So you're going to see a ton of cool new stuff coming up. I say a ton, a ton of times in a row sometimes. That's ridiculous. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you guys very soon.